Hey there, in this video we are going to look at an introduction to solving radical equations. Now those are equations where the variable is inside of a radical expression. Now to do that we are going to use the idea of isolating the variable and the new part here is going to be that at some point we are going to need to square both sides of the equation. All right, so looking at solving radical equations, these equations that are on the, on the board right now here are all radical equations because the variable is inside a radical expression. Even the last one, there are variables in two places, but since one of them is inside a radical expression, it's a radical equation, even though this one's not in a radical expression. To solve them, we're going to use inverse operations to isolate the variable, starting with this first one here. If we're going to solve that one, this thing says the square root of something. Now the something is highlighted in yellow there, but it says square root of something is equal to 3. If the square root of something is equal to 3, then I can use inverse operations. The inverse of taking the square root of something is squaring that thing. If I square both sides here, squaring this square root, those are inverse operations, squaring and square root. If I do that, all I'm going to have on the left side is that yellow thing there. On the right, I'm going to have 9. That yellow thing is just 2x minus 5, 2x minus 5. Whatever it is inside the square root, if I square both sides, it eliminates that square root sign and I just have that. That's the key to the technique that we're using here. Once I do that, 2x minus 5 equals 9. I can just solve it. It's a linear equation. I can solve it as any other linear equation. I can add 5 to both sides or think of it as moving the 5 over. Whichever way I do that, I'm going to get 2x is 14. And then if I divide both sides by 2, I get x is 7. All right. So that's the solution to this radical equation. Now, as you may have done before, when you get a solution to an equation, you can take it and check that it is in fact the solution. Now, normally that's just gonna be checking it to, to make sure you did everything correctly. But as we'll see here, as we move forward, it's gonna be very critical to check your solutions here. But if you were to check this, if you put the seven in there, uh, maybe I'll just write it out quickly over here. And we substituted in a 7 there. And then we evaluated both sides. Remember, you're not solving it again. You're just checking. Okay, that works. Okay, we'll look at the second one here now. Uh, we're going to use the same technique here. But... The thing is, we aren't going to be able to square it as is right now because this square root is not all by itself on one side of the equation. Over here, we had a single square root expression on one side, and we had a single value on the other side. Here we have more terms. We have a term here, we have a term here, and we have this term here. So we need to isolate the square root sign first, this radical expression right here. To do that, probably the simplest way here, since this term is negative there, I'm actually going to move this whole term to the other side and make it positive to square root x plus 3. And I'm going to move the 5 to the other side and it'll be 11 minus 5. Or in other words, 6. Now I have 2 square root x plus 3 is 6. If I want to solve that, I'm going to look and notice that 2 times this is 6. I could actually divide both sides by 2 first so that 1 square root of x plus 3 is 3. Now let's just make a little bit more room quickly here. Now that I have square root of x plus 3 equals 3, I can square both sides because I have a single term here and a single term here. So if I square both sides of that, just like the other side, just like the first equation, I'm going to have x plus 3 equals 9, which means x has to be, if I take 3 away from both sides, 6. Now, if I was to take this and check it, just to make sure it works by subbing it in there for the x, 
This one maybe we'll, we'll just do mentally here. If I put the 6 in here, this is going to be 9. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. And 11 minus 6 is 5. So that one works. All right, let's do this third one here. If I'm going to solve this one using this idea of squaring both sides, I need to look and think about do I need to isolate the square root expression? And I don't because that's all by itself there and this is just a single term over here. If I square both sides of this, uh, on the left I'm just going to get 5x minus 6. On the right I'm going to get x squared. Now the difference here, the two equations I had in the first two examples here were linear equations once I squared both sides. Since there's a variable in this side that I'm squaring, I actually get a quadratic equation, so we need to think about how to solve that. We don't solve it by isolating directly. We first of all need to gather all the terms on one side. So I'm going to choose to move these the other way because then the x squared term is positive and it's a little bit simpler. 5x, if I move it to the other side, becomes minus 5x. Minus 6 if I move it to the other side becomes plus 6 and leaves me with 0 here. If I'm going to solve that, the simplest way is to factor it. You could use the quadratic formula if you wanted to. But this is going to be quicker since it does factor. That means that I have two values here, 2 or 3. Now we're just going to confirm that they, that they work up here. And again, I will just do this sort of mentally. If I'm going to take the 2 and put it in here for the x, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 6 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. And that's the value that I subbed in. If I put a 2 there, I need to put a 2 there and work out that the two sides are the same. That one works. If I'm going to do the 3 and check the 3, as in I'm putting a 3 here and I'm putting a 3 here and working it out. So I, need, I want to see if there's a 3 on this side. So if I put a 3 in here, I have 3 times 5 is 15. 15 minus 6 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3, which is what I have over there, and that's what I have on the other side. So that one works as well. So those are the two solutions to that equation. This equation has two solutions. So that's an introduction to solving radical equations. In the next video we are going to look at something called extraneous solutions which can happen when you're solving radical equations. Extraneous solutions are critical to consider when you're solving radical equations so make sure you continue on to part two before you're finished.